Right, so uh, let's touch up some of the warm highlights now with a little bit of uh, orange, orange soft pastel. It's just a standard orange, but what this will do over our red-brown, it'll help to brighten some of those warm highlights. So we can create a little more dramatic highlight over that red-brown at the top of the head. Inside the brow here, we have quite a nice highlight coming down towards the eye. And remember, we're putting the orange over the sanguine so that will make it uh, totally bright orange. And again, the black will absorb a lot of the color anyway. Anything that's prominent, that stands out, cheekbones, uh, brows, noses, lips, are always gonna catch a bit more of a, a stronger highlight. Down the ridge of the nose here, we can just give that a little bit more impact too, and the center ridge maybe. Progressively more and more detail will help you to, to keep those natural shapes. A little bit more shaping on that top lip, the way it curves outwards underneath the bottom lip quite a lot brighter around the chin um, i think that's probably about it and then we'll progress to our hard pastels for the details okay so now it's time to put in the final details first of all i'm going to reinforce those warm highlights with a sanguine hard pastel so i'm going to start around the head uh, sort of really recreate this halo effect from the the backlit warm light that we're getting just a little finger to guide you, these small flicking motions with the edge of the hard pastel to establish more detailed fur texture. If we create the edge first, and then when we have an inside edge like that, just take your finger, rub it away to keep it nice and soft. In fact, you can also reinforce the shape of the head underneath the fur by dragging your finger around like that. Because remember, there's a skull inside there. The hair is just over the skull. And remember the rule, warm colors come forward, cool colors and dark tones recede. So this is gonna help to push the, the face more forward towards us. On the ear, well, we can create the back of the ear shape with just a fine line, but most of the front part of the ear will be highlighted. And now we can really start to sculpt the shapes of the face. Where well, we have this edge here is gonna catch quite a lot of the highlight and we want to create a really crisp edge because it's just skin, skin over bone. There's no fur involved, so the edge will need to be fairly sharp. So we do that first, just soften it off. So working around the edge of the face, uh, we've got a little warm highlight on the upper eyelid, and some texture there. We can reinforce the highlight around the colored part of the eye. Now there are no whites of the eye, the great apes, chimps, and gorillas and so forth don't have whites of the eyes. So don't ever try to paint a brown eye on a chimp or a gorilla and put the whites of the eye around it. We have a nice sharp edge to the cheek there as it comes down to the side of the face. Highlight around the nose and the upper lip. The edge should be nice and sharp. Bring a few little detailed wrinkled highlights into the top lip. There's a lot of big teeth there to cover. Then we have a little highlight on the bottom lip, just around here. Stand back, squint, make sure the tones are about there. And coming into the face, remember we've got our warm highlights this side going into shadow on the right hand side. So we've done the eye, just put a little bit of texture underneath the eye where we see it. And then the brow itself. We begin to texturize the brow a little bit more using the quarter inch part of the pastel so we don't want this texture to be too fine. And remember a pastel stick, if you break it in half into one inch sticks, gives you almost three brushes in one. It'll give you a fine detailed brush, which are the corners. It'll give you a quarter inch brush using the quarter inch edge. And finally, a one inch brush if you use the whole width of the pastel. Inside the eye, again, nice and sharp, that ridge in the nose. Not so sharp as we work inside because now we're going into the shadow area. Bring that up to the brow very softly. Rubbing as always, push the pastel into the paper, keep your edges nice and soft where appropriate. A little bit more of a highlight in that ridge and on the inside there. Again, soft, warm highlight on the ridge. And we're after this extreme tonal effect from light through to dark. So don't make this eye as strong as that eye. This eye is, is lit up, this eye is not so much lit up. And just a quick check, I'll put, reinforce maybe this little line on top of the ear, just to help to bring it out and then once we're happy with those tones, probably a bit more on here. Once we're happy with the tones, then we can move on to our next hard pastel. Okay, so now it's time for the final highlights. 
Now it would be easy to swamp the painting with white highlights at this stage, but totally wrong, because I don't want to lose that lovely warm glow that we've got using the sanguine pastel. Be careful not to kill it, because light colours like ivory do have the possibility to kill a painting with too many highlights. Working around mainly the brow, nose and eye area, uh, just a few key little shapes you can pick up with the ivory pastel. Uh, a little bit of ivory just on the lighter part of the brow. Again, using the quarter inch part of the pastel just to create that little bit of texture. Just underneath the eye and the lower rim, just to accent the lower rim more than anything. You're going to be careful not to swamp it. Side of the nose, get a couple of wrinkles in there maybe at the same time, just to strengthen certain shapes, certain edges and so on. And I've got a little separate join below the nose and the mouth, so we can just pick that out, the ivory over the sanguine. We have a highlight on the bottom lip which we can pick out. And now another important area for this highlight, the edge of this face, because remember, as it comes down into the chin, we've got fur or hair in the chin and now any highlight that picks up uh, soft fur is always a little bit more dramatic so we can use the ivory to pick up these light hairs that are being lit up by our light source we do a, a row of fur like that and as before with the top of the head we'll soften off the inside with the finger check it again by the squinting if it needs to be a little bit brighter now I probably think it does need to be a bit brighter, then we go over it again. So a second layer with a little bit more pressure will make it a wee bit brighter. So just lift the pastel off the paper as you do them. Nice little tiny sharp strokes. Again, softening off with your finger, both directions, that way and that way. One thing about light hairs, when the light shines through them, they almost form a solid highlight, almost, not quite. So it would be wrong to separate these hairs too much. Individual light hairs lift that chin off the paper. So we can continue this final highlight around the, the face, just up, not all the way around here. I don't want to create a complete outline of highlight. Maybe just a touch more in the middle of the nose, just to bring that out. And now, after this, we can tidy up those dark areas with our black card pastel. Okay, so now we're almost reaching the end of the portrait and some people may find this surprising but we can finish off the portrait on black velour with a black hard pastel. We've obscured some of the key deep dark areas in the face, you know, the creases, the edges of the eyes and so on. And of course we need to tidy up some of the original white pastel sketch. So let's start around the eye and brow area. Using the black hard pastel, all we need to do is simply with the hand resting slightly on the, the paper to give you more control, recreate those dark shadows around the eyes, creases above and below the eyelids, and this will just bring back the final impact that we want. So the eyes really do need to stand out. Although we can't see the pupils too clearly, we know they're there, so we just need to have a little soft pupil here. Give it a rub with the finger. Pupils should never have a hard edge, really especially on apes, they're always very soft. So put them in with the black pastel, give a little rub with the finger to soften it off. Below the eye rims, we've got little bits of wrinkles and texture around there. Coming back inside the nose, deeper shadow that we've lost with the color. So just sketch that back in, bring back those deep furrows. And another furrow in the middle here, and then very dark shadows in this side. Always give them a little bit of a rub to soften the edges off as well. A few little dark wrinkles under the brow, creates additional texture of course, and quite a dark area generally around this eye. So again we need to refine the shape of the eye, get that roundness back for the whole of the eye in this case. We can barely see where the pupil stops and the coloured part begins. We can cover any bits of white with the black pastel quite easily now. And you'll notice it's exactly the same shade as the paper, so you won't even see it. Coming down the side of the nose. And of course, what we do have is this uh, crease down the centre of the nose, which we've lost. So we can put that back in, re-establish that, and you can see it more visibly now. The nostrils, sharpen those. And this nostril on this side, which is, again, mostly in shadow, but we can still see a fairly crisp edge. And soften the edges of that with the finger again. A few little creases around the mouth. And again, drop them down here and there to represent deep wrinkles. 
stroking with the finger in the direction that the wrinkles are, are going, of course. A little bit of texture down here. Let it fade away to the edge. And wrinkles above and below the lips. Of course, an important line here between the lips, as in a human portrait, the line between the lips gives the expression. Not the lips themselves, it's the way the line between the lips is angled. It can create a smile, a frown, sadness, happiness, anything you like with that line there. A few bits of texture to represent the hairs in the chin, and the shadow underneath the bottom lip. And then we'll move around here. We've got a, a nice bit of blue established on the ear, but obviously we need to just finely shape that. So use the side of the black pastel to soften that blue away so we're just seeing the, the top part of the ear and let it fade down into the cheekbone area there. So you can easily cover that bit up and maybe just create a bit of sharp edge to the ear there. So we've got it highlighted. We put a darker, more precise shadow behind it then the ear will stand out more. And finally with the black, we mentioned how we can cover up any part of the original sketch that we don't want. So around here where we've got bits of white showing from the original pastel sketch, we can easily get rid of those and just tidy up the edge. We'll just uh, make it a crisper edge against the black background. And you notice how seamlessly the black pastel works against the black velour. Around here too, a little bit of sketch down here. Any other marks you've got on the velour that you don't want to see, so if you go over it with the black pastel and it disappears. And finally, to finish the portrait off, just a wee bit more sparkle in the eyes themselves. This is the only time I'm going to use white, only on this eye, because this eye is in direct light, this eye is in shadow. To put the same reflection in both eyes would be wrong. So I'm going to use the white just to pep up the reflection on this eye, just to give it a nice little glint, squint at it. If you squint at it and you can't see that white reflection uh, very well, then it usually means you want a little bit more on it. So that brings us to the end of the programme and indeed the end of the series. I hope you've enjoyed watching and happy painting. Now available to buy. Try these techniques at home whenever you wish. The extended DVD of today's workshop and the book that accompanies this series are now available from the Painting and Drawing channel. For further information and to order your copy, go to www.paintingdrawingchannel.com.